Okay, so moving on with chakras and kundalini. Uh, before we get started, I want to share something with you really quick. This book came in yesterday, How to Stay Young by Christian de, de, D.A. Christian de Larson. And, um, this is a scholar select book. And uh, it says, What the prophet has dreamed, the scientist will prove to be true. And um, from everything we've learned about, you know, through what we've read so far about vibrations and everything as such, that mind being a system of vibration, and that everything, in fact, is an effect of a, a, a vibration, you know, and, and we have a, our personal system within us, and we're learning about this system while reading the Wheels of Life book. And, um, we can, in fact, it, I mean, we've learned from you that the single-celled organism, okay, the cells that everybody is made out of, remember, the cell is the basis of man, okay, the cell cannot die. The, the cell forever looks to, to duplicating itself. You know, a single-celled organism cannot die. All it can do is, is reproduce itself and create more of itself, you know, and that's how they, they talked about immortality being reached through that, okay, and we've learned that these, you know, where we ourselves are made up of trillions and trillions of these cells, and our, we have a mind, you know, or a system of vibration, and that even our body is nothing but an expression of the, the mind that we have as humans, you know, and, and as, as we could continue to, to keep our vibrations high, you know, our body's going to respond to that by, by staying young, you know, responding to that vibration. Remember the, the, scientific, the science experiment that they did with the sand on the drum head? Okay, they, they put tons of sand on the drum head and they were playing, you know, music. They were playing tones. They were vibrating. They, they were creating vibrations that were expressing itself through the drums, okay? And the sand that was on the drum took the shape of the vibration, okay, because... It was an the 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 effect the sand took was an effect of what the vibration was causing the sand to take because it was that that vibration you know and I even seen this video they were doing science and they they had a glass cup in front of a, a speaker and they were playing loud music okay and the 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 cup was literally changing its shape and in the the matter, the structure of the cup was changing simply because of the vibration. Excuse me. <clears throat> simply because of the vibration that was acting on the glass cup. Okay, likewise with us. You know, our body, you know, responds to whatever state of mind that we are in. You know, our state of consciousness. Because the body was nothing, has been found to be nothing but chemical reactions. You know, when we think negative, destructive thoughts. You know, we respond to that, our body responds to that by releasing cortisol in the bloodstream, making you feel bad and then breaking down the tissues of your own body. You know, as to where you felt good or in your happy state of mind, you know, you're thinking happy thoughts, you know, and you're just having a great day, you know, your body responds to that by releasing serotonin, which makes you feel good, you know, and from there your energies would be higher, you know, just like the, the, the glass being affected by that vibration, so too will the these cells and tissues, the structure of your body will be affected by the vibrations you are emanating from your own consciousness, your own mind. No, um, that's very cool. That's what we've learned so far, and we're definitely excited to see a little bit more of what this book has in store for we have. This is actually the first book that I'm reading that was asked. Like a, a viewer asked me to read this book. So I feel really good about that, you know, and we're definitely excited. Um, this came in a day early. It was supposed to come in today, but it actually came in yesterday, which is, you know, even better. You know, sooner the better, right? Um, so with all that being said, we're, um, we're focused on our, our journey through our own personal consciousness. Because as we've just learned about the planets and the vibrations, now we it's it's definitely time to put everything we've learned from you into connections with everything we're going to learn 
through here, okay, because we are all affected by the planets and we all have our own systems, a uh, vibratory system within each and every single one of us. Now, with all that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and continue. We are on chakras and kundalini. And then starting with the quote by Sat Chakra Nirupana, and it says, Her lustre is that of a strong flash of young lightning. Her sweet murmur is like an indistinct hum of swarms of love mad bees. She produces melodious poetry. It is she who maintains all the beings of the world by means of inspiration and expiration and shines in the cavity of the root lotus like a chain of brilliant lights." End quote. So when Shakti resides in the base chakra, she rests. Okay, Shakti. Okay. Shiva and Shakti. Okay, so what we've learned that Shakti is the power. Okay, it gives expression to Shiva. And Shiva being the power holder, which gives power to Shakti. Okay. So, moving back to her words, says, there is no power holder without power. No power without power holder. The power holder is Shiva, and power is Shakti, the great mother of the universe. There is no Shiva without Shakti, or Shakti without Shiva. So, when Shakti resides in the base chakra, she rests. And Shiva, being pure consciousness, pure bliss, Shakti being the expression of that consciousness, that bliss, and Shakti being the expression resides in the base chakra, okay, the chakra which grounds you to the physical being, and she rests. Here she becomes the coiled serpent kundalini Shakti, wrapped three and one half times around the Shiva Lingam in the Mulad Hara. In this form, she is the inherent potential in matter, the primordial feminine force of creation, and the evolutionary force in human consciousness. In most people, she remains dormant, peacefully sleeping in her coiled abode at the base of the spine. Her name comes from the word kundala, which means, quote, coiled, end quote. When awakened, this goddess unfolds from her coils and climbs upward, chakra by chakra, reaching for the crown chakra at the top of the head where she hopes to find Shiva descending to meet her. As she pierces each chakra, she brings that chakra's awakening to her subject. So Shakti starts, uh, Shakti being a serpent, okay, or represented as the serpent, okay, starts at the very base of the spine, okay, starts at her root chakra, okay, and as uh, Shakti begins to awaken and, and evolve, okay, she then moves up, reaching up through the, through our chakras, through our currents, okay, all the way from the manifesting currents up towards the liberating current, and she's reaching for your, your Sahasrada, your crown chakra, okay, because it is there. Remember that Shiva reaches down to meet with Shakti, and Shiva, or Shakti reaches up to meet with Shiva, okay, and it's in the middle that they, they both mingle and, and work together, okay, and that's interesting because when Sh um, Shakti's reaching up to have her strongest point at the, the crown chakra, the crown chakra being that point in which we actually connect to the universal mind. Okay. As she pierces each chakra, she brings that chakra awakening to her subject. In fact, some believe that it is only Kundalini Shakti who can open the chakras. If she is able to reach the crown chakra and complete her journey, she is united with her counterpart, Shiva, which is divine consciousness, and the result is enlightenment or bliss. Kundalini Yoga is an ancient and esoteric discipline designed to arouse the Kundalini Shakti force and raise it up the spine. Okay, like we were saying, yoga. Okay, yoga is a it's a, a, a scientific exercise for the mind. You know, it's it's a movement that connects both mind and body. You know, remember what yoga stands for. Okay, it means yoke. 
Okay, you're literally yoking your consciousness. And what she's saying right here, the discipline of yoga, okay, is designed to arouse the kundalini shakti force, okay, the forces of your 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 base chakra, and rise it up to the spine. It often involves initiation by a trained guru and years of specific yoga and meditation practices. However, there are many people on and off the spiritual path who are having spontaneous spiritual emergence experiences, some with genuine kundalini awakenings, so it is worthwhile to examine this mysterious and powerful force. The paths kundalini take are quite varied. Most commonly, kundalini begins at the feet or the base of the spine and travels up towards the head. This movement can be accomplished by shaking spasms or feelings of intense heat. Accounts of kundalini, however, also include similar intense activity traveling from the head downward or from the middle outward. Sometimes kundalini symptoms happen within a matter of seconds and then vanish, occurring at intervals of hours or years. At other times, the symptoms may last for weeks, months, or years. Kundalini is generally a unique and powerful experience that results in a profound consciousness change. This change may be experienced as increased alertness, sudden insight, vision, voices, and feelings of weightlessness, a sense of purity within the body, or transcendent bliss. There is some evidence that Kundalini sets up a wave-like movement of the cerebral spinal fluid, which triggers the pleasure, the pleasure centers of the brain, giving us the, quote, blissful state, end quote, so often described by mystics. A Kundalini experience is not always pleasant, however, Many people have extreme difficulty functioning in their mundane lives while Kundalini is thrashing about through their chakras. Okay, and remember how we were mentioning before, when you engage in certain things that just seem to block your energies, okay, and you feel a little bit of pain the next day, you feel, you know, not so good in your stomach the next day, you feel not so so straight in here the next day, you know, and it's, it could be a painful experience. That's because these energies, this kundalini, is trying to pass through this this blocked chakra that you had, okay? And it's that, that, that pressure, that force of your energy trying to get through that specific energy center in the body which causes that, that pain, that, 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 that uncomfortable feeling that you feel. While Kundalini pushes her way through your blocks, you may find difficulty sleeping or a dislike for energies associated with the lower chakras, such as eating or sex. Yes, because sometimes I do not have an appetite, you know, as much as I need to eat. You got to eat, you know, and, 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 and it's, want to hear something pretty intense, you know, f try it out yourself, put it into practice. You remember how we were talking about those biha mantras, these sounds, you know, this vibration that vibes at the energies of these chakras, okay, you're literally giving more energy to that chakra, okay, so when you feel like you're blocked in a specific area, meditate on those sounds, okay, give energy to those, that specific chakra, help clean yourself out, you know, because I've done this, and you, you, you suddenly get that appetite, you, you start tasting the food, you know, even the food tastes a little bit more detailed, it's, 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 it's amazing, you know, like, everything is literally vibration, you know, in the state of consciousness that we're in, our own mind itself is, is, is working off of the state of vibration that it is in, you know, if you want to have a, a more exciting life, you want to bring more excitement to your life, more energy into your life, you yourself need to bring more energy into your life, okay? You need to start eating right. You need to start thinking greater and better thoughts. You need to bring yourselves into a higher state of vibration, you know, and this in turn will will affect everything else around you because remember, everything is based off of consciousness. Everything you have around you, everything you have within you is based upon your own consciousness. All, all gain being the result of a, a cumulative consciousness and all loss being the result of a scattering consciousness, okay? A mind that's 
forces get scattered, loses things, okay, and the mind that stays focused and has its forces put together stays on top of things. That's how it works. That's how our energy works. That's how our mind works. And that's how our our environment, our body in turn is created by you know this this self disciplinary act that we all must must bring ourselves in subject to. Yes, some people become highly sexual after a Kundalini awakening. There may also be some profound depression or fear as you look at your life through the eyes of this serpent, goddess. She is a healing force, though not always gentle, as the veils of illusion are drawn away from your normal reality. For those who experience spontaneous kundalini awakenings and do not have a spiritual teacher to work with, there are some referral agencies that can provide you with experienced therapists who understand the spiritual energy and will not necessarily judge it as crazy or psychotic. The serpent is an archetypal symbol throughout the world, throughout the world representing enlightenment, immortality, and a path to the gods. In Genesis, the serpent led Adam and Eve, led Adam and Eve to taste the fruit from the tree of knowledge. This symbolizes the beginning of Kundalini, creating an unceasing desire for understanding, yet grounded in the material world. Quote, being the apple. End quote. In Egypt, the pharaohs were crowned with serpent symbols over their third eye to represent their godly stature. Did this represent ascended Kundalini? Even today, the double certain wraps itself around the staff of healing, forming the modern medical symbol, and Kadacious. The Kadacious. See figure 1.11 on page 39. Okay, and that's the next page after this one. The Kadacious clearly imitates the winding the winding of Ida and Pingala, the central nadis crossing between the chakras surrounding the Shushumna. Remember, the Shushumna is the the, the highway, that, that thing which passes between and through each and every single one of our, our, our chakras. Okay, remember that figure from 1.8 on page 19, okay, that, that, that pathway. Okay, and the entwined serpents are also symbolic of the double helix pattern of our DNA, the basic information carrier of life. Kundalini is a universal concept for a very powerful, enlightening force. It is also a very tricky and unpredictable force to play around with, one which may be loaded with intense pain, confusion, and frequently may be interpreted by the world as insanity. This may or may not be accompanied by the more positive aspects listed above. It opens the chakras, but like opening each cell in a jail, Kundalini may release whatever is lodged within the chakras. This may be expanded insights or experiences, or it may be old traumas or abuses that caused the chakra to shut down originally. Okay, and that I want to talk a little bit about too. Okay, I remember talking about this when we were going over the emotions and, and you, okay, and how emotions are what focalize our thoughts on a specific point, okay, because yes, we need to concentrate our thoughts, but the emotions are like the sunlight which give power to that thought, okay, and, and, and old traumas or abuses, okay, that were not expressed, okay, you didn't express your emotions at that specific time, okay, you locked them away because you didn't want to feel that pain, okay, this pain, okay, that gets locked and lodged within your own subconscious, okay, this energy does not go away, okay, if you don't deal with it, you're just going to hide it within yourself, okay, and old traumas or abuses that cause the chakra to shut down originally, you may have an experience that brings that energy back, 
okay, and then immediately you're just thinking about that old experience you've had many, many, many years ago, but it's still there simply because you didn't handle it at that moment, okay, these chakras, these energies, okay, express what you're feeling within that specific energy, okay, do not hold on to, to anything, we need to release it, okay, we need to keep our chakras flowing and receiving an open and released channel, okay, because remember what happens if we don't, we build blockages, okay, and once we have blockages, it blocks other systems within the body, okay, all these work together, they're all intertwined, Kundalini does produce a profound state of consciousness, and this re resulting state of consciousness may make it very difficult to get along in a world so predominantly, quote, unenlightened, end quote. It may not support our current paradigm or be harmonious to the circumstances in our lives or the physical state of purity within the body. These discrep discrepancies may make for a great deal of discomfort but are not always to be avoided. Kundalini is basically a healing force, and pain is felt only when it encounters tension and impurities which are not quite ready to release. Learning to open the chakra allows to clear, allows a clear path for Kundalini that is less apt to be painful. Theoretically, Kundalini produces a force that helps open the crown chakra, okay, your Sahasrara, located at the top of the head. Because blocks in the chakras may trap our spinal energy, this chakra is often the hardest to reach. Classically, the crown chakra is considered the seat of enlightenment. However, I believe that it is the combined presence and connection of all the chakras together, giving conscious, con con conscious attention that brings enlightenment. Remember, pro-life and pro-spirit. Okay, being on both aspects of, of your own being. Okay, not just focusing on the, the inner realities of life, but also working with the outer as well. You know, seeing how it is, you know, and using this to make it however we would like it to be. Or seeing that this is how they made it to be, and you just, okay, that's how, you know, that's just, it is what it is, right? It's amazing. It's it's so many key elements that go into play. It's almost like when you're talking about what you're thinking, what you're trying to create, it also goes into play what another person is thinking at that specific moment in time. Because I've realized a lot of the people that I've met, you know, you always have something in common with somebody you meet. Okay, it's just finding that commonality between the both of you and what you share. The raising of energy to higher chakras occurs naturally and spontaneously when we relax deeply and pay attention to all of our chakras, okay? It, it occurs naturally, okay? Remember the subconscious mind that we are saying. The subconscious mind is responsible for our blood flow. It's responsible for our heart. It's responsible for the healing within our body, okay, and we can consciously control the, the functioning of our subconscious mind, okay, although we can't consciously make our heart beat, we can focus and direct where we want the blood to flow, okay, we can focus and direct where we want our energies to be within our body, you know, focus on your fingers, for example, okay, really put your blood flow into moving towards your fingers, Okay, eventually you're going to start feeling a pulse within your fingers because all the blood is moving towards that specific area. Okay, remember every cell in our body is, is, is in, intelligent itself, okay, and it thinks itself, okay, and it acts upon your direction, okay, but yet they also act on their own accord, okay, and when you're, when you're in congruence with your, your subconscious mind, when you allow your, your body to do its work, harmoniously, you know, without thinking of yourself being sick, you know, if you don't feel very good, think wellness into your life, you know, start thinking well, okay, don't let that thought interfere with the activity of your subconscious mind, okay, because if you're thinking negative thoughts while your subconscious mind is trying to heal itself, it's not going to heal itself, because remember, your, your body, the cells of your body act and, and are directed by the thoughts you are con consciously entertaining. In the Kundalini chakras occurs, the healing occurs naturally and spontaneously when we relax 
deeply and pay attention to all of our chakras. Attempts to force the energy to rise often results in strain, tension, and a feeling of being, quote, spread out, end quote, or irritable to all those things, to all those around us who are not doing the same thing. The latter, the latter produces an alienation that I have found to be symptomatic of a lack of enlightenment. Okay, and this is in parentheses. She says, many people have come up to me at conferences to excitedly tell me of their enlightened seventh chakra experiences while not having the slightest sensitivity to the fact that they were rudely interrupting a conversation or were living in bodies that seemed horribly neglected, end quote because they, 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 they weren't poor, or they weren't pro-life. Okay, living in bodies that seem horribly neglected. Okay, pure, pure true enlightenment is wholeness of being, you know, pro-life and pro-spirit. Okay, you're not just living within your mind. Okay, you don't just live in your imagination. Okay, you live also in the external. Okay, remember, we use everything in here to create everything external. Okay, we have that power to, to rise above whatever it is we're going through in the external world, okay? But it is still something that is tangible, okay? It's something that is material. It is dense energy, okay? This live rock, me thinking about moving that live rock is not going to cause that live rock, okay? It sets in motion the forces to move the live rock, but it doesn't move the live rock itself, okay, and those forces that are set in motion are the energy patterns within me, okay, these chakra systems, these patterns of energies that I have within me, okay, and once I, I, I think about it and act on that thought, I then in turn grab that rock and, and then make that, that, that manifestation happen in the external world, you know, it's like they, they have their own it's almost like they have their own properties. Yes, yet they're 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 closely intertwined as 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 one. It is impossible to talk about chakras without mentioning kundalini. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this um video right here. We're still on kundalini and we're starting with this next page. So I'll see you guys and girls in